today's going to be nice and short. Um, what sort of the, the content that I would normally teach you today would normally take about two hours to do, actually. Um, I tend to make it as awkward as possible for everyone, and I force you all to go downstairs and record a walk cycle in front of everybody. Um, and then we go back upstairs and we sort of work with what we've got. Um, obviously, that's not possible now, so we'll sort of just take it as Okay. Thanks to this, it's become so speedlined that um, it's actually <laughs> fucking jealous. I'm always jealous of the youth. Um, but yeah, so we're going to carry on with that. And then I'm just going to walk you through uh, a little bit of like the theory behind a walk cycle, not anything that you're going to need to learn or remember, but just, um... <laughs> yeah, dude, rotoscoping. Yo. If anyone ever comes to you and says, I've got a job, it's just a quick rotoscope, fucking run. Don't, don't even get involved with that. <laughs> you're not going to make your, uh, you're not going to make back the sheer amount of energy, blood and tears that you're going to put into that. Mm. All right. <laughs> I had to rotoscope. Um, I don't know if you guys know Dan Petlansky, uh, but in my honors year, we worked on one of his music videos and the rotoscoping for that was an absolute fucking nightmare. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's talk about what we're doing. I'm then going to sort of just walk you through the, uh, the roadmap that I've posted for you guys just to make sure that that's all. Uh, we can understand that and we can carry on from there. And um, yeah, come, come study. That's all good. Okay, um, cool. So let me start presenting. Hopefully the bandwidth is going to allow us to. Uh, yesterday's classes were very frustrating in terms of disconnection. Um, but I think we never really have problem with you guys, also because we have so few of you streaming, I think. Okay, so I am presenting. Let me make sure I can see what I am presenting. Um, I'm going to have to go and change the layout. All this jazz. I'm assuming you guys can see the screen. Motion sheet sheet is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Um, the, that's, it's the best one to go to. You have it on your shelf, dude. That is a rare find, and that is a very, very good investment. Um, if at some point you had the ability to do like a sneaky scan and uh, maybe disseminate that illegally to your fellow students, that would be a great time. Um, why can't I pin... Jason is presenting. Okay. Can you guys see the stream? <laughs> can you guys see that we're looking inside of After Effects right now? I'm struggling to, to get to the point where I can see. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So let's just take a look um, at the sort of layer system here. I'm also going to show you the, um, just how I've gone about putting this together. Um, let's just all get onto the same page. So I'm going to go to Window workspace. I'm just going to make sure that I'm on default. Uh, so that's like shift F10 if you guys want the shortcut for that. Um, ah, I see I accidentally overwrote that save. So there we go. Okay. Um, so remember that we sort of spoke about how we can set up a, a vertical workspace when working with character animation just to try and keep our layers manageable, right? So with the, the shy option, um, it's really bugging me that I can't see the stream, and I don't know why that's the case. Um, so will allow you no. Okay, well, as long as you guys can see it, just let me know if if, um, if there's anything that like if it stops working. All right. Um, let's do this one even. Okay. Do its thing. All right. Um, so you can see when we when we shy our layers, uh, we're only really working with the top seven layers. All right. And we are going to bring in some footage, um, but we will sort of take it from there. Okay. Just to give you guys an idea, would would anyone here like to sort of see how we go about creating a vertical workspace? Um, if not, then we can sort of skip it. I do cover it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, so. Okay, so I'm just going to leave the call on one screen and try and join again because it is bugging me that I can't see the stream myself. Um, there we go. Okay, cool. I can see it. Great stuff. Okay, so 
you'll see where my mouse is uh, currently hovering, right? I'm hovering over the timeline, and I get this little white rectangle in the bottom right corner of that mouse icon, right? And that means that I am now hovering over the right area where I can move this window and dock it somewhere else, all right? So again, just making sure that we're all on um, sort of like the same page, so I'm on default, all right? If your default doesn't look like mine, you can always say reset default to save layout, and it'll sort of like set it up for you to look like mine. But what we're going to do is we're going to start dragging some of these windows around, okay? So when I sort of set up a workspace, I always take a look at what I don't need, all right? We're not working with audio. Get rid of that. My preview has been set to 29 frames. There are some fixes, just to let you guys know. Um, I'm going to be making... Uh, four fixes to this rig so that it works even better. And then I'm going to be adding um, some more changes to the lip sync file that I gave you guys. You don't think it's working? Um, I can kind of see it. You guys see my, my mouse moving across the screen. Uh, it's fairly good. The lag seems to only be like one second behind. All right. Um, so I'm going to fix up everything. So the files that I've given you guys, you'll be able to... Um, yeah, unfortunately, I can't do anything about the lag, but the video will be there. Um, I'll, I'll try and sort of explain slowly so I don't leave you behind. Um, so like I was saying, the files that I've given you, this is just the class exercise. We, you guys can delete this afterwards. I will provide you with a better rig. All right. We don't need to worry about our preview, so we'll get rid of that. All right. Now, the effects and presets, this can be very useful. Okay. Um, if I sort of think about it, when it comes to, to any sort of animation, I do kind of want this window available because it has everything that I could want to do if I was doing like a background or if I needed to add a gradient ramp to something. Um, so I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to go down to where my align option is uh, and I'm going to close that. I'll close my libraries. I don't need that. I'll close character, which is our typeface and our paragraph into tracker over there and then content aware full. We're just sort of getting rid of all that information there. Okay, cool. Next up, I want to move this effects panel out of the way because I want my viewing screen to be completely sort of all to the right, okay? Um, so again, I'm just gonna click and drag this window and you can see that wherever it highlights blue, that's where that this window is going to dock. So I'm just going to dock it right up at the top here with my project panel title, all right? And now I can jump back and forth and I'll just move that to the right-hand side. Uh, so now I have my project panel, which I'll sort of go through in a moment. We then have our effects and presets there that we can jump back and forth in between, all right? Now, obviously, we also want Duic in place um, because we're setting this up as kind of like a Duic workspace. So we're going to go to Window and we're just gonna open up the uh, Duic window, right? So window .jsx, and that's going to open up our screen here. You might get a notification that there's an update. You're welcome to update if you would like. You follow the exact same program, you sort of re-downloaded it from Rainbox. Um, take the file back into your um, script UI panels inside of your project settings. Um, if you guys are lost, I do have a video for that as well. Okay, so I'm going to take Duik and I'm also going to sort of, I either drop it up here with the project panel so I can just jump back and forth between these. Other, other times, if I am working with like the project panel in specific and I don't want to keep jumping back and forth, I can also just dock Duik to the actual bottom of um, my panel over here. So now I have my project panel, my effects and presets, and then I've got Duik available underneath. Okay, lastly, our timeline. I'm going to click and drag that, and I'm going to drop it on the left-hand side of my screen. Okay. And that is kind of now my setup for here. Now, when it comes to the actual rig itself, right, I'm going to show you guys, um, you don't have to do this yourself, but just to let you know, I can go about saving even more space in my timeline by hiding these columns, all right? So I can hide these columns by just right-clicking on top of it and say, hide this. All right, so I can get rid of my parents. That's fine because we don't need a track mat we don't need. And it's going to take away our modes. Okay. The only difference or the only problem with this is that we don't see, um, like, the position and rotation values. So I kind of, I set this up and then I eyeball everything if I don't need to worry about using exact rotation degrees or anything like that. Okay. If I ever need that information again, 
I can always right click anywhere in this top sort of section here where it says like layer name um, and I can go to columns and I can then just come here and see what I need. All right, so switches, that's what we need in order to see our values. So I'll keep that one on for now. Okay. To say The cool thing about any is that we make custom ones for pretty much anything we need. Okay, so I've already set up a Duet workspace, so I'm not going to overwrite it. Um, okay, hang on, I see the stream is now frozen. Um, every time you open After Effects, it tells me, okay, cool, Ivan, I'm going to show you how um, I'm going to show you how to fix that. At least one person in every lesson has that problem. Okay, so I've gone to uh, to Window Workspace. All right. And um, if I want to go now save this as a new workspace, right? you'll see that our bottom options are reset default. That's going to undo everything we've done. Okay, Try not to click on this because command or control Z is not going to, um, is going to like undo a physical workspace change. All right. We can say save changes to this workspace. I really wish that this button was somewhere else because I don't want to overwrite this workspace, I don't want to overwrite my default workspace, right? I want to go to save as new workspace, okay? So when I click on this, it's going to ask me what I want to save it as, okay? And whatever you name this will then always be found in your workspace like this, okay? And then sometimes if you, uh, if you work on a different machine and you install, because this now gets saved, right? This gets saved to your creative cloud file. So if you then go and open and log into After Effects on a different machine, it's going to ask you if you want to import your sort of, um, you know, your settings or your setups. If you say yes, you'll then have your Duix setup nice and sorted. Okay. Cool. Let us fix the missing error files. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and record a quick tutorial when, um, when I make this file to try and get this from, from breaking. Okay, let's take a quick look at the project panel. This is sort of going to segue into fixing the, the missing file errors. Um, Ayola, uh, John, Angela, are you guys good? Uh, are, are you guys having any missing footage errors? Jacques, are you also right? You're all good. Okay, cool. Uh, Okay, cool, cool, cool. It's weird how it affects some people. Um, okay, so you'll see in the project panel, um, as well as in like our layer panel, um, I've gone to great lengths to make sure that this is as easy to interpret as possible. You don't need to do anything with these. When I give you the file, I will automatically have hidden and locked everything that you no longer need. All right, but just to give you an idea of what a good workspace looks like, I've color coded everything that relates to each other. Um, I've made sure that. I've then color coded the structures that relate back to those assets. And this is just to make sure that if I go ahead and die of Corona tomorrow, Nicola can pick this up and finish teaching you without having to worry about going through my chicken scratch notes. Okay. So let's hide all of that. Now, all of these layers are found and you'll see that I've kept this project panel very, very good, uh, sort of like nice and neat. I've got a folder for solids, all right? When I create folders, that's that little sort of icon down here where my mouse is hovering. All right. Um, if you sort of label ones as solids, it's automatically going to just drop all the solid layers that you create in there. All right. Um, the layers do not touch. All right. This is all of our cucumber files. Now you'll see that I've got these AI files. Right. And if you've got the missing footage, you're going to have these ones over here tend to be like white for some reason, and then the rest of them are like rainbow colored. Okay. Um, just taking a look there, so we'll dump all the layers in there. Footage, this is where we go about putting any audio or video footage. You'll see that I've provided this MP4 file. So we're going to click and drag that into footage so that we can collapse it and get rid of it if we don't need it. Okay. So <clears throat> the very important thing about keeping this file in port or keeping your project panel sort of as clean and neat as possible is... Um, I'm sure you guys have experienced it where like a friend opens up their computer and they just have like all their files saved on their desktop. And if they want to show you, they're like, okay, wait, just give me like half an hour to go and find the right file. Don't be that person. All right. Keep everything neat. Makes your life less stressful. Life less stressful is a longer life to be lived. Okay. And then we have our compositions here. All right. So if I automatically label uh, or if I label a, um, a folder comps, 
any compositions that I create will automatically be dumped in here for us. All right, so it's quite nice. Um, After Effects kind of can follow certain sort of command inputs when it comes to their folders there. Okay, now footage, goddamn typos, dude. Useless. Um, this footage over here is sort of like the re-update. This is what we're going to be using as um, as like a reference material. But the best way to go about replacing our footage, right? If we sort of go to our layers here, what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to reveal just one of these. I'm going to go and deliberately break this. Um, I'm going to just quickly deliberately break this for you guys. So that's in my documents. Yeah, I can actually kind of just do this. So if I drag my folder and I drop it into my desktop, for example, going back into After Effects, all of a sudden, boom, absolutely terrifying. It's telling me that everything I've imported to After Effects is now useless and broken. We've got a horrible, like, rainbow man when it eventually, like, actually loads. Like, right now, After Effects is like, Jesus, I don't know where any of this is at the moment. And you'll see I get this horrible rainbow dude. Okay, now this is not the be all to end all as long as we still have the Illustrator file, which is why we save and back up our files, we can fix this. Okay, so we're going to go into the project panel and we're going to go into those layers do not touch. Um, and for those of you who have, you'll see that these we've got these white icons here. Now, we don't want to work with those. If we kind of work with those, it's going to ask us to bring in our files uh, separately which we kind of don't want to do, right? Because we've got so many layers. So I'm going to right click on any of the layers that have this little rainbow icon next to it, okay? Right click, we're going to go down to replace footage, okay? And then file. So what we're doing here is I'm now going to navigate to where I've moved that file. So I dumped it on my desktop. I've got the walk cycle here. We're going to go into footage. We're going to go into cool cucumber example, and we're going to find that AI file. Okay, so wherever you save that file to, you're going to open up that folder, you're going to go into the footage, cool cucumber example, and find that AI layer. Okay, let's get the stream to catch up. So I'm just going to stop presenting quickly and start again. It seems to work. All right, let's do that. Um, here we go. Okay, cool. So you guys will see that I've now found this, found this file, right? Now, I don't need to worry about anything down here. I don't want to create a, a, an Illustrator sequence that's just going to sequence out all my layers, kind of like a, a, that stepping method that I showed you guys um, for the lip sync. We kind of just want to say all footage files, and we're just going to say open. All right. Once I do that, it will then automatically see, oh, damn, in this file, there's everything that I need. So let's just take all of it and just replace it. And we say, OK, it's going to say like six missing files here. That's fine. Um, I can then, ah, you see, like here, this is something that I didn't struggle with before. Um, let me just go and like replace footage file, see if I can fix that. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to say open, and there we go. Now we have everything, okay, except for the eyes and the torso. So I can just go and say replace with it. Sometimes After Effects are a bit finicky, and it's like, nah, I don't really want to see that particular file. So it's then going to ask me to choose a layer. Which one do I want to relink here? All right, and this is where layer like labeling your layers is very important. You can imagine if this was just like layers one down to twenty, this would be a nightmare. I can see that I need to replace my torso, so I'm simply going to select my torso and I'm going to say OK. All right, uh, I'm just going to undo that because I want to change that setting from. Uh, let's just do this again. Sorry, we'll do that. Yes. OK. It's going to ask me again. Choose layer torso and then I'm going to say layer size. All right, keeping layer size. Remember, we always import composition retained layer sizes. I'm going to say OK, and then it'll replace that for me. And I'll do it with the shades as well. OK. So very important, as you can see, this is a bit of a frustrating and time consuming exercise. Always important that we set our layers up uh, as best we can um, to sort of minimize all of this. So I just need to grab the shades and say OK, and now I've got everything. All right.
those of you who had the missing footage file, Alistair, um, Ivana, do you got, have, has that sort of fixed it for you? Do I need to sort of show that again? Hi, yes, I know it's fixed. It's just the foot, um, just the footage uh, part that I can't find. The the which part? Sorry. Uh, the footage, the MP4. Oh, uh, okay. So I did update the I updated the file on Classroom to include the footage. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll just get that one. But yeah, if you can, um, I'm essentially still going to be just walking you through the layers for now, um, so we can just wait for that. Um, okay. So while we while we carry on with that, just taking a look at the layers that we've got here. Um, the four fixes that I need to make is I didn't create null objects that's going to allow the, the shoulders to roll across the chest and behind the chest. And I didn't create null objects to move the hips across the, the sort of like pelvic region. Okay, so that's what the updated file is going to include. I'll layer them correctly and um, I'll do a quick video just to sort of show you um, issues of extraction on your side. Okay. Okay, um, if that is an issue, I can also put these files, I'll put these files onto Google Drive as well, and then you'll be able to download straight as it is without having to unzip anything. Um, let's make a note of that. Uh, what's today, Wednesday? Okay, upload on Drive as well. And we'll do that and hopefully that will sort out some issues there. Okay, so just sort of taking a look, Ivana, if you just want to watch the stream for now while it's um, downloading, thankfully this really isn't that difficult. Um, I kind of just want to show you how the skeleton has been set up so far. Okay, so we're using the, the inverse kinematic method, right, where we have our controllers that allow us to move our arms up and down. Rather than just creating bones for these arms separately, I created an entire humanoid or a hominid rig, which I'm quite proud of. Um, so we've got our sort of spine here that's going to, or the, sorry, the controller for the body allows me to move sort of my, my body back and forth without having to, um, you know, create a, a sort of god knell to do that for me. Um, I also then have the pelvic or the, the pelvis over here, all right, and that is going to allow me to do like my whole twerk movement. And you'll see that when I drag my pelvic region down, it, it actually automatically updates the bend in the elbows and the knees for me, which is quite nice, right? So we've essentially said, cool, here are the feet, keep them on the floor. And if I drag this up, we get the illusion of my character jumping into the air and sort of slamming his head into the ceiling and breaking. But whenever we bring him back down, uh, it will then sort of correctly bend the knees and elbows for us. Okay, um, get the stream caught up. There we go. All right. Uh, we then obviously have controllers for our feet and for our hands. So cool. I'm glad you think so. I'm glad you think so. Um, we then have the controller for the head. So wherever I move the head, that's going to then rotate my body from the hips. Okay. Um, and then if I rotate the head, so, so taking a look at what, I, what happens when I rotate. So you can see that we've got a little bit of movement that we can rotate. We could then do some rotation in the hips, uh, which is going to give us like a sort of bending motion there. Um, that's fine. It's not going to auto save. And then if I rotate my body a little bit, you can see I, I have this control to kind of get fairly intrinsic or complicated looking poses um, without having to like really go in and just like adjust the rotation of a hundred different layers and all these different bones and things like that. And I can then always just reset my character back to his starting point uh, by saying that rotation back to zero. Okay, cool. So just taking a look at the footage, all good now, fantastic. Okay, so <laughs> um, the footage is a prime example of what you guys are going to experience where let's just drag and drop it at the very top so we can <laughs> see what we're looking at, right? So I just did like a very basic walk cycle here. Um, and sorry, before we drag it in, I need to show you something. Okay, so <clears throat> just delete it from your, from your layers there quickly. Um, so we sort of know, and if I just could give you a quick demonstration, 
Uh, we've experienced it where we sort of like accidentally double click on a layer, right? And it takes us into like this personal view for that layer. It can be very annoying, right? When you sort of do it uh, accidentally, but this is actually a very powerful sort of window that makes our lives a lot easier. Um, and that comes in handy when we double click on our video footage. All right, um, so again, just waiting for the stream to catch up. I've double clicked on the video footage inside of the project panel. And there we go, it has opened up this viewing window for me. Okay, and we can see in this viewing window that it's laid out the entire video for me. I can scrub through, you'll see me getting like back and forth. Um, the very first walk that I tried to do was like that Conor McGregor, like super cocky walk. Not necessarily like how I walk daily. Um, so a little bit of wooden acting there. Um, <laughs> we're going to be using the second piece of the walk. We're going to start with our contact phase here. Okay. So just to get us all on the same page, if you take a look at uh, sort of at the bottom of that viewing window, you'll see we've got this little time bar here. Currently mine reads 00017.04. That means we're on the 17th second and the fourth frame. All right. So if you guys want to be exactly where I am, you can click where it says uh, 17 or where mine says 17 zero. If you're at the very start, it'll just be all zeros. And you can go and type in 17 zero four as the last four digits there. All right. When you say, okay, it'll jump you there. And there we go. Okay, are we all good? Are we all sort of looking at the same frame of video footage? Fantastic. Okay, so if I jump over to that uh, cheat sheet that uh, we've given you guys here, all right, um, this is just here for you guys to refer back to, all right? Our top section here, this is a single step. All right. Now, a single step. Sorry, I missed that message there. Yeah, who, who that boy? <laughs> um, so <clears throat> we've got our sort of first step over here. Okay, um, and this is the this is half of a walk cycle. All right. Um, you can see that our front leg, the one closest to us, the one that's colored white, um, is then obviously at the back when it comes to that first step. Okay. So last year I only provided this sort of like top image and everyone got confused because all they did was create only a single step. Um, the stream is frozen again, but I'll just explain what we've got on screen. Okay, so when we're walking, and this is sort of like a very intrinsic thing, so you guys can try and like pay attention to it in the future. But on our contact pose, we kind of set up the uh, horizon line for where the head is going to be. Okay, so as long as our head is always at the same height for our contact poses, we then have a perfect idea of where the rest of the movement is going to take us. Okay, so as we step, uh, we bend our knees, right? We've got our down position. Okay, that's one of the major in between keyframes. Then we have the passing pose, right? So that's where one leg passes the other. The, the leg that we are currently standing on that has the entire torso directly above it, right? Because that's how we're sort of keeping ourselves up. We then have the up pose, all right? That's where we have like the actual step. Um, Jacques, you're pretty tall. I'm sure you know that we don't take the up step through doors because we tend to then sculpt ourselves. Um, and then we have the contact pose again, right? If we take a look at the bottom image, this has now been laid out into a full walk cycle over 25 frames, okay? So taking a look there, we've got our contact pose is the very first one. We've got the down pose, the passing pose, up, contact, down, passing, up, contact, okay? You'll then notice that our very first frame and our last frame, frame one and 25, are exactly the same, okay? As long as we get that right, we can then make our walk cycle loop so that we don't have to worry about... Um, then going having to like reanimate every step. Okay. And then obviously this is like for a character with a constant cadence to their walk, right? Um, if he was going to trip and fall at some point, we would obviously need to take that into account. Um, but yeah, that's just to give you guys an idea of how the timing would go about in terms of cell animation. We know that we block out our animation in After Effects. I'm sure you guys have seen with the force and weight animation that that actually makes life a lot easier. All right. 
um, and then going back and applying easing at the very end. All right, so I'm just going to maximize or like open this window up a little bit so you, you can see what we're doing here. Uh, and again, waiting for stream. I'll just stop presenting and start presenting again. Sorry, I know that these like little sections must be very annoying. Let's allow that there. Okay, there we go, hopefully. Okay. Um, does anyone here have any like experience with um, Premiere Pro? Anyone sort of maybe taken a look at it or been introduced to it? You do, Dope. Um, it's a useful tool. I definitely don't know it as well as, uh, as I should. But when we bring in footage, this is sort of a section that works very similar to, after, uh, to, to Premiere Pro. We've got some in and out point markers. Okay, so if we take a look at where my mouse currently is sitting, um, you'll see it's kind of sitting on top of one of those like loopy brackets. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I, I fight, I fight every year to say, make the motion design students learn After Effects instead of Premiere. And uh, <laughs> it turns out you weren't supposed to be there. Oh my word, that must be frustrating. But hey, at least now you know a little bit of Premiere. All right. Um, so we've got these in and out points, right? Um, so where we're currently sitting on um, 0, 0, 0, 17 seconds, 0, 04 frames, I'm going to click the little sort of uh, bracket on the left hand side. And you'll see that's going to cut my footage down uh, to this in point. Okay. I'm then going to scrub through my footage, right? So we've got our contact pose. Taking a look at me looking forward, that's my right leg closest to the camera. All right. There is my passing pose. We've got our up. We've got the contact pose where my right leg is backwards. We've got our down going into the up. So we've got our passing pose, the up pose, and then we have our contact pose again. All right. So this is where we're going to end it. Now we have a full loop. All right. If I were to sort of take this little segment, obviously I'm walking across the screen but it would sort of loop perfectly as if I was continuously walking back and forth. Okay, so currently my time now reads 0, 0, 0, 18 frames and 20, or 18 seconds, 20 frames. All right, if you want to sort of set up there. And we're going to click on the out point, the little square or the little wiggly bracket on the right hand side. Okay, now the cool thing is I've told After Effects, I only want this little sliver. Of this, uh, of this animation. Don't give me anything else, all right? So if I take my video footage now, let me just quickly shy everything we don't need there. If I take this footage now and click and drag it in, it's only going to be that short little section, all right? Now, the problem with this is you can see that if I go to my very last frame or my very end of my timeline, I'm one or two frames short to get that looking right. Okay, so I'll fix that for you as well to get it properly done. But just to give you guys an idea how we can go about adjusting the length of our timeline. Okay, so I'm just going to hit the, the tilde key. Tilde key is that like little, squi the, the little squiggle key. It's usually like next to the number one. And that maximizes our screen for us in After Effects. Okay, so just so we can all see what we're looking at. Um, I'm going to hit Command or Control K. That's going to bring up my composition settings. All right, I don't need to rename it. I'm not going to worry about the frame rate for now. I'll fix that for you dudes. All I want to do, currently my duration is one second, 15 frames. I'm just going to make that two seconds, 15 frames. Okay. And then I'm going to say, okay. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit in my timeline. Now you'll see if we unshy all of our layers, notice how they all end where the original composition ended. Okay, so it, auto it doesn't automatically lengthen all of those layers in time. If I show you what happens here, when I go off of that sort of piece of information, notice how it disappears, right? Obviously now, because it doesn't exist at this point on our timeline. So here, just to fix that, I can just unlock everything by sort of just clicking and dragging that lock. I'll hit Command or Control A to select all of it. And I'm just going to drag those to the very end 
or rather I'm not going to drag the video footage, sorry. I'm just going to drag all of these layers to the very end there. And then I can go to the end of my video footage and I can hit N for NATO to end my timeline there. Right click, trim comp to work area, shy everything I don't need. Okay, so now we've got the, all the space that we need without having to have any missing information. Okay, are we all okay so far? Um, am I sort of going too quickly or anything like that? Indeed, oh, away. Okay, so currently our video footage, I'm just going to turn off the audio by clicking on that little speaker icon over there. Um, this footage is obviously now sitting on top of my character and that's going to make it a little bit difficult in terms of like the actual animation, right? So there's a few things I could do. Um, I could click and drag this to the very bottom of my timeline, which puts my character on top of everything. But then I have to go and like change the opacity of my character, the opacity of all of these layers over here. Um, it's just not conducive to a good workflow. All right. So instead, I am going to drag it to the very top. I'm just going to make sure to relock everything that I'm not using. Um, and I'm going to play with the blend modes. All right, so this is where we would toggle our switches and modes. So if I go over here, the mode, remember I told you guys, this is our, the exact same way in like, mode is a constant. Mode works the same in any sort of visual interpretation of the Adobe Suite, all right? And if I go and change that mode, so if I click my little drop down here, uh, and I kind of just set it to lighten, or I set it to, to overlay, soft light, anything like that, um, you'll then see that we can actually see our character on top. All right. And that's just going to then help us block everything out. Okay. I can always then change the opacity as well to set that, um, that information. So if I change it to 50%, I can see a little bit better, but I can still see my character on top. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to lock that video footage. I don't need to worry about that. Go back to the very start of my timeline and we are going to start setting up our character. Okay, so what I'm gonna do as well, just to make this easier, I will create a god null so that we can move everything a lot easier. But if we grab our hips, uh, or if we grab all of these visible layers, so all of these controllers, layers two down to eight, we click and move all of those, we can easily move our character. And I see that I am missing one of, is that staying behind? we go. So I've got the spine moving everything. There we go. So sometimes it just leaves that controller indicator behind. Okay. So obviously we would need to then scale up our video footage to make sure that it's kind of looking right. With me being a slanky fuck, I am a lot taller than our character. So I'm only going to increase this slightly just to give us like an idea and I can lock that again. Okay. Cool. And now I can go about setting this up. So again, just grabbing all of my controllers, I'm going to just get my feet essentially onto the same layer. All right, there my shoulders are kind of overlapping. And uh, if I scale the video footage up a little bit more, I think we'll be ready to, to work with it. All right, so the scale on my video footage is 111.5. <laughs> Not 11.5, 111.5. Okay, cool. So we essentially do the exact same thing that we did with our force and weight. Uh, I'm going to select all of these controllers. I'm going to hit P for position and then holding down shift and R for rotation. And I'm just going to create some keyframes for both of those values. Selecting all of those keyframes and applying toggle hold keyframe. Okay, and again, to give you guys an idea, um, this toggle hold is very useful, uh, and maybe you guys have noticed it, when you go back and want to add more sort of movement or another pose in between, right? So by blocking this out, we're gonna get all of our major poses. We can then go back and we can make sure that like the, the passing step or the ups and downs rather, that those are working right, and then we can apply easing and sort of take it from there. Okay, so. Let us set this up. I'm going to grab the blue foot icon. So that is layer five. And I am. Oh, no, wait, you see, this is this is where we can make mistakes. So 
this is where, um, and I often make these mistakes, is just confusing where the feet are. Okay, so this is where we're going to notice the problem with the rig at the moment where I don't have the ability to roll that leg across the torso, but my pink foot is in front, and I'm just going to try and pose this as best as possible, um, just using that as a guide. All right, so we've got that. Um, this pink foot is maybe a little bit too bent. So I'll straighten that out a little bit, and I can play with the rotation to fix the shoe a little bit there. All right, so I don't know about you guys. Like I find this process fairly cathartic. We're literally painting my numbers. We're just sticking this on top of it. The only thought process really involved is just making sure we don't get confused between which arm is which um, or which leg is which. All right, and we can always mitigate that confusion by simply hiding the layers that we're not working on, right? Um, let us then quickly change the rotation there on that wrist. And if I want, I can just quickly grab the body, so that's layer eight, and I'm just going to lean it forward ever so slightly to like three degrees rotation. All right, and we're going to kind of give him that like leaning forward vibe. Okay, cool. Then we're going to go through to our next main frame, and that is our passing step. So remember, we can always refer back to the walk cycle cheat sheet. Okay, every um, every frame here that happens on um, sort of like frame one, frame thirteen, and frame twenty-five. That's our contact poses. So those are the very important ones. The next one we get right is the passing pose. Okay, because that sets the tone for when the leg actually passes. And then we can go backwards to the down and forwards to the up. All right, so we're essentially going to use that passing pose as kind of like a guide. And this is here, like, never feel upset about looking at things like this. Um, life would be very hard without, without it. Okay, so at this point here, again, I'm going to grab all of my layers and I'm going to shift them up just so I can keep in time with my body there. Our pink foot at this point is down on the ground and it's quite straight. All right, so we'll just sort of put it there. Let's adjust that rotation back to zero degrees so our foot is flat. All right, and then grabbing my blue foot, which is the background, I'm going to set that up as a passing pose, kind of like that, and then obviously play with the rotation. I will add some, some controllers to roll the toes for those of you who want to put in the extra effort, but as is like this, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be a stickler about things like toes. Um, if multi-million rand corporations can ignore the fact that their characters are absolute shit, then so can we. All right. Um, cool. Then again, moving further down, let's find where the next contact pose is. All right. So that's going to be over here. Okay. So let us grab all of our layers and shift them up again. And we're going to straighten my pink leg out. Okay, we don't really snap our legs straight for those of you who have ever like had a child bolt into your knee and spur or like a dog getting overexcited when your knee snaps back, that's a very painful experience, right? Um, so we kind of want to have a small bend in the knee where possible, just to sell the idea that we're not like a robot. Okay, so that's going to have a little bit of a bend there. Let's fix that rotation so I'm not doing a pirouette. Um, cool, and it's just saying it wants to autosave, but it doesn't know where, so we can ignore that. Okay, then I'm just going to quickly solo my video footage so I can make sure I'm working on the right arm. Okay, so my green arm, my light green arm is going to be rotating forward, right? We obviously sort of counteract the rotation of our body by moving our arms opposite to our legs. That makes sure that the torque doesn't sort of make us fall over in out of like sheer uh, loss of balance. So that one's going forward. Dark green hand is going backwards. And we can kind of see the fingers maybe just a little bit so we can sell that movement a little bit more. Okay, cool. So from here, now we're going to move on to the next passing pose, right? So scrubbing through that video footage. 
Here's the passing pose for that. Okay. And we're just going to block it out, right? Is this making sense? You guys can see that this is really not as terrifying a process as uh, maybe I made it out to be. But at the same time, hopefully you're finding it fairly interesting because like literally, if you think about it, philosophically, you're playing God, right? You're taking a character that is just dead pixels and you're breathing some life into him. Okay, now you can see I was probably walking a little bit horizontally here, right? So you'll see that even though I'm on that passing pose, I am sort of very sort of bent in the knee. So what I'll do is I'll try and get these legs as best as I can, and then I can grab that hip layer, right? Remember when we move the hip, that's going to allow us to actually just reposition our character um, without having to move the feet. Okay. <laughs> yes, rise, bring bring the world to an end. Let's let's just bring it into an animation zone. If you guys want to see what the apocalypse looks like in, in animation format, I would highly recommend watching um, The Congress. The Congress is a fantastic movie. Okay, uh, let me solo my video footage information one last time. Or again, I can see that my, my arm here is, is straight next to my body as it moves backwards. Let's add a little bit of a bend in the elbow. This arm is going to be coming forward slightly. All right. So maybe to sell the idea, because we saw the fingers in the last pose, let's bring this arm back. And then, then in the next key pose, we can, uh, in that contact there, we'll see it. Okay. And shift everything up there. Grabbing our foot and dragging it out. You'll see that this is where my stuff up with the rig is really visible, is on these forward steps. We would obviously have that hip roll forward, um, but I'll just fix that with moving my hips as, as necessary. Okay, it doesn't matter. Obviously, we, we're using our video footage as guides, but we don't have to stick to them entirely. If it's not working, if it's not looking right, we need to focus more on what looks visually correct than, uh, than anything else. Okay, so I'm just going to bend that. Let's bring that foot further back. Let's see if we can bring this foot further down. Something like that. Our back hand is now visible. And this arm is now going downwards. Okay, so what I would actually normally do here is simply copy and paste my initial keyframes, but just to give you an idea of what's been happening. Turn off my video footage, play out, pretty dope. I would add a little bit more time at the end, so I'll set it up again just so it doesn't automatically snap backwards. But we've got a character that walks, guys. How cool is that? Hopefully, hopefully it's cool. I don't know. <laughs> Um, and that's all we needed to do today. That's literally all I needed to show you guys, right? Um, if I wanted to just give you like a quick demonstration, I could always then clean up my keyframes a little bit. So you'll see that um, I've got like a rotation value at the very start and then only another rotation value here by like just before the first second. So I'll just clean this up so that I'm not accidentally breaking any of my rotation information. Okay, we don't need that one, we don't need that one, we don't need that one. So, let us check what happens when I apply easing to everything. Okay, there we go. Now, the cool thing with Dirk is that it automatically applies that bevel to it. Okay, so by bevel, I mean that when we take a look at the arcs involved, we can see that it's already tried to smooth that out as much as possible. Now, this is where we would go back and do the real refinement. All right, this is where the, the sort of the essence, the life of the character really gets breathed into it, is when we go back and we apply the arcs necessary. All right, so right now he's walking very stiffly, right? Um, and the major problem with what we're looking at is the fact that his arms or his hands and his feet are moving essentially horizontally, right? This is where we would need those, uh, the shoulder rigs and the hip rigs, but we would then go and we would start applying some curve to that, right? So if I were to give you an idea for this hand here, for this movement, I would want this movement to be a little bit more of an arc there. Um, 
let's give an arc as best we can here just to show you right so there we've got that hand following an arc it is snapping our shoulder so i would need to make sure not to do anything like that um, but this is going to allow us to really just add some life to our character all right then we would go back and we would start doing some easing i am going to provide a full tutorial to follow rather than do it now in class um, and then yeah we'll sort of take it from there okay um, are you guys all right with this? Can I show you what I need for um, what I need for homework next week? And just quickly introduce. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, telemarketers all deserve to burn. Anyway, okay. So just to give you guys an idea, this file here. Uh, let, let's take a look at the homework quickly, so I don't lie to you about anything. Uh, let's go here and let's take a look at classwork. Okay, so our instructions for week six. I want you guys to record and submit your personal walk cycle footage. All right, it's going to be the same as when you were recording your lip sync. I'm probably going to say go re record because you're a bit wooden. Let's try and get more of like a natural flow to it. Um, so what we can do for that is just have fun with it. You don't have to do a normal walk. Do if you want to have like a limp or like a pimp limp or something like that. Make it interesting because uh, that's something that you're going to want to show off to people afterwards. All right. Um, make sure to have a complete cycle, guys. So refer back if you need to to the cheat sheet. Don't just focus on one step. All right. Make sure to do the entire process. All right. Um, you don't need to do any easing. All right, I only need it blocked out. Um, so complete the exercise that we covered in class today, get the full walk cycle down, which most of you will sort of have already done by now. Um, make sure to have the complete cycle finish on the pose that you started on. Okay, then I want you guys, you're simply just going to block it out. You're going to render what we've done. You don't have to have that video footage on in the background. Simply just turn it off and render out. Okay, I want you to then render and submit your force and weight. I need to get a progress check on that. So, excuse me, by this time, we should have easing applied, all right? And some progress from your last submission, okay? We kind of want to start finishing that one up as quickly as possible, all right? Um, and then I want you guys to render and submit your personal lip sync animation, okay? Now, this you're going to ignore for a second. I am going to make an edit to the homework, giving you the correct lip sync files, giving you the correct um, walk cycle files. So I'm essentially saying don't do your homework just yet. Okay. Um, for that lip sync, I don't need any easing, nothing like that. Uh, I just want your entire scene blocked out for the, uh, for the lines that you're using. Okay. To give you guys an idea, um, of what we'll be working with um, and to show you what I'll be fixing for you guys. Let me just do dive in here. Okay, so <clears throat> let's wait for the stream to catch up quickly. So I've given you guys three characters, all right? There have been labeled options one, two, and three. Let me just stop presenting and try and get this to be a little bit smoother. Okay, so our three options, I've given you like a female character, which we've just had a, a peek at. Um, there we go. So <clears throat> we've got our face now. Everything has been set up here. I'll show you guys in a tutorial how to go about masking the eyeshadow for this character so that we don't see it under the hair. All right, but that's there for us. Um, I've got our eyebrow null. Right, so that's going to allow us to, to move there. I'm also in the process of setting this up that when the eyebrow null moves, our eyeshadow is going to follow. All right, so we're not going to have that sort of awkward uh, movement there. I then have our blinking null. So this works the exact same way as I showed you in class. That's going to let us close the eyes from below as well as from above. Okay, uh, and then we have the pupil null. Right, so essentially just everything that we did or what I showed you in class. Okay, uh, we then obviously have the other option that I've given you. We, this is the one that we used in, um, in class. Okay, um, so this is uh, essentially just going to count as a third character. I wanted to make another bespoke one, but I wasn't happy with anything that I made. So I just gave up and we're going to use this one. Okay, and then finally, <clears throat> just to let you guys know, so they all use the same mouth shapes. 
So what I'm going to be doing, some of you guys had the, um, like the lust emotion, right? So a lot of people involved like the lip bite. So I'm going to pre-animate a lip bite and include it for you guys so that you can kind of just like plug it in and play from there. Okay, so I'm not going to ask you to do that yourselves. I'm just going to ask for a little bit of patience. All right. And then we've got option one, <clears throat> which is our little whiskey glass, dude. Um, so if I quickly show the mouth shapes here, again, these are all set out. Um, this one works slightly differently just in terms like the, the face moves across the glass very well, which is quite nice. We don't have to worry about any eyeshadow for that. The lids these sort of close off um, <clears throat> the top sections of the eye. All right, so you can see we can kind of have like a happy face. Um, uh, let's see what else we can do. So we can have like a sad face. You know what I mean? So we're kind of just going to be doing a little bit of um, experimentation with that. So we're kind of just giving you another exercise rather than just having these normal just eyeballs everywhere. Um, another cool thing that I have done for you guys, and I'll sort of show you how to turn it on later. But if we turn off the whiskey layer, <coughs> that's layer 26, it obviously then turns off that background, that's our static background. The layers 23 and 25, um, they, they start with the word see me. When we play that back, hopefully the stream will show you, I've actually pre-animated for you guys, the liquid in that glass moving. All right, and we can always time remap that if necessary. So like if your character looks to the side quickly, we have that movement of the liquid like go a little bit faster. Okay, you'll be able to see in the file a little bit better than the stream. Okay, so hopefully you guys are excited. Don't feel sort of, um, <clears throat> don't feel hell bent on saying, okay, cool, the whiskey glass is, is a male thing. So we'll have the male voice from him. I'm so glad you guys like it. I worked really hard on these. Um, so if you like, you know, don't be afraid to to sort of like ignore the the sort of pre-assigned gender of the of the options, right? So if I had like a super deep voice and I was talking from this like little Asian lady, like that would be comical or strange. And then the stranger it is, the more people are going to want to watch it. And yeah, it's just going to be a cool time. Um, what I have been doing as well, just to give you guys an idea, is I have been setting up. You can see here. Um, so I've taken a, I've taken a sound clip from, um, the, one of the ASDF movies. Hopefully you guys have seen them. Otherwise I would highly recommend it. There are some fantastic short little animations. Um, so I've taken three different voice clips from one of the scenes there. I'm going to then have, uh, the characters voice that, and I'm going to be recording how, how I go about doing that. So I can show you how to work with each character model. Okay, um, so that will probably be provided by, <clears throat> well, I need to get it up as soon as possible for the other classes, but I might give an extension for that. Uh, I'll let you guys know. There's a little bit more work to do on this. Okay, but that's essentially all I want. All right, uh, I'm open up to contact sessions. We do have access to the Discord server that I keep plugging. Um, I've given you guys the roadmap to let you know where we should be. So we've now finished week six. I've shown you the walk cycle. You've done the force weight and the lip sync. By week seven, all right, in class, I'm gonna show you guys the idle animation. So if you've looked at the brief, you'll see that I've swapped the, the walk cycle and the idle animation around. That's just because the idle animation is gonna be a lot less work in terms of actual animating than the walk cycle. So just to give you a bit more time on that. Um, and then you'll see your force and weight, as I've said, easing added, continue refining, lip sync, personal footage blocked out, including blinks and eyebrow movements where applicable. No easing needs to be applied at that point. All right. Then we have the idle animation. So you'll complete the exercise that we do in class. And then I'll give you another file and you'll essentially just do the exact same thing and you'll be done with that. All right. Just to let you know how the rest of the term is going to work. So we're in week six now. All right, we do have up until week nine. Okay, I thought we only had eight weeks. We've got nine weeks. So next week, <clears throat> we are going to have our last official class time. All right, just so I can show you the content necessary. Um, and then from that point onwards, I'm just going to be creating an assignment for week eight for progress checks. All right, no official class in week eight. Week eight is going to be set aside for compulsory contact sessions. All right. Um, 
So I don't use a booking form. I find it very confusing and frustrating to like try and work with that. Also, like I don't know, I prefer to have a little bit more control over when the contact sessions actually take place. So first come, first serve. Um, you either email me and I'll mark you off or I'll start emailing you guys and setting up times that work for you. Okay, and we'll sort of try and get that uh, started. Okay, are there any questions with what we've done for today? No, all good. Cool. All right, well, if there aren't any questions and you guys are all good, feel free to bounce. I can stop recording. I'll post this onto Classroom as soon as I can. Remember, I do post your like these recordings, your class recordings onto YouTube as well, uh, onto that channel that we've made. Um, and that's just there for you in case uh, like Google Drive is the streaming is shit or the downloading. Somehow, you know, Google being the best thing in the world still has really shitty like upload and download servers. All right. Stop presenting. Stop recording. You guys can have a fantastic day further. And uh, I'll check you next week.